bring your two fish and your five loaves, your meager nothing to me, and I will make something out of it. You come to me with what you have. You come to me with faith. Before Karen and I moved to Budapest, Hungary, we were in Kansas City, and I was very stressed by that. It's like, how do I raise 32,000 one time and 3,000 more monthly and sell my house and cars? And that gave me 10 days yeah, to get this done. And I was really stressed. And in the middle of this stress, I was having a quiet time on my bed and God fixed my eyes to John chapter six. It's Jesus sitting on a hill and these 5,000 people and their families are still following Jesus since the end of the day and the disciples are very tired, Jesus is too. And Jesus turns to Philip and he says, where are we going to find bread that these might eat? And Philip turns to Jesus and says, 10 months worth of wages wouldn't be enough. There's no bread store and there's no money. And so Philip's like, you can stop thinking about that right now. That's not gonna happen. Where are we gonna buy bread that these might mean? Well, Jesus said this to Philip because he knew what he was intending to do. So, and it says to test Philip because he knew what he was intending to do. So get this, Jesus feeds 5,000 people by taking two meager resources, five loaves and two fishes, blesses them, gives them to his 12 disciples, and they end up feeding somehow 5,000 where these meager resources multiplied and multiplied and multiplied, and there were 12 baskets of leftovers after the miracle. So. In January of 1989, when I'm faced with this challenge, uh, Jesus, as I'm reading this, goes, what should Philip have said to me? And I go, why? He goes, because that's what I want you to say to me right now. You're facing a challenge. Philip faced a challenge. I told him to keep facing it. I let him know that he had little faith, and I was trying to get him to have greater faith. And I contemplated that and so I started looking yeah what, what should Philip have said well if you put it in the context of how long Philip had been following Jesus he had already seen Jesus raise two people from the dead heal people I've seen you calm the storm I've seen you cast demons out of I've seen you do the impossible so I came up with this answer Philip should have said Jesus I've never seen you feed 5,000 people from nothing but I've seen this and this and this. What do you have in mind? I'm on board. And I immediately started to weep and said, I, I don't know how you're gonna do this. But whatever you have in mind, I'm, I'm on board. I, I'm gonna follow you as the one who can do this. And I took that as, I'm gonna get you to hungry. I want you to be on, on board with this. And long story short, April, between April 1 and 10, 32,000, all of the money, all of it came in, sold our house. It's just, it's a miracle. And God used John 6 again at the end of 1989. So we move in August to Budapest, Hungary. And Karen and I go to language learning. Hungarian is the third most difficult language for an English speaker to learn outside of Mandarin and Arabic. And exhausted every day, not feeling like I'm making any progress in any way. It's the single hardest mental challenge I, I've ever faced. And I'm getting more and more and more discouraged that I can't do it. It's just impossible. I was a mess. I was a mess. And that anxiety started to show up in my dreams. And it was trying to speak in Hungarian in my dream. And I was trying to say in Hungarian, hang the picture on the wall because I don't know why, I mean, maybe it's because we were decorating the house that we were renting at the time, but I, I couldn't say it. And I'd wake up shaken, sweating, in the middle of the night, two or three times a week for three weeks with this exact same dream. And immediately Satan would be there and he'd say, you've made the biggest mistake of your life coming here. You were happy in campus ministry in Kansas or Nebraska, you had a significant you know, ministry, and you can't even say, hang the picture on the wall. And you came here to talk about Jesus and theology and philosophical apologetics, and you 
can't even say, hang the picture. You've made the biggest mistake of your life. And this, this, I would just be buried with shame and stupidity and failure. And, and I just was a, I was a mess. And God, during those months, began to bring John chapter 6 back to me. And he said, David, you're responding like Philip did. Remember the lesson I've taught you. What should you be saying now? I want you here. I, it's not a mistake. Give me your faith. I want to feed the 5,000. I brought you here for a reason. Bring your two fish and your five loaves. You're meager nothing to me, and I will make something out of it. You come to me with what you have. You come to me with faith in me, and you say to me what Philip should have said. And so the lesson for me in John chapter 6 is God's heart plus God's ability equals what my response should be. And I'm just going to believe that you're going to do some miracle. Well, you know, we ended up living there for 18 years. We learned the language. And so now Karen and I have a, a saying in our family that when we face a difficulty, an impossibility, we say, a cost full a cape at defalra. It's like saying to, that's Hungarian, it's, it's like saying to the challenge, you know, bring it on or charge ahead. We're, we're going into it. But that's not what that means. A cost full a cape at defalra means hang the picture on the wall. We can say that now. And it's because of the grace of God and His patience with our doubt. And so when you're facing impossibility, I would encourage you to express your faith to Jesus and counter doubt and complaint and fear and anxiety. And it leads to joyful submission. It's like, yeah, what? what? I mean, what do you want to do? Okay, I'm on board. I'll, I'm in. Let's go. That's, that's the response of faith that He wants.